As kids, we're taught to believe everything our teachers tell us. But with age comes wisdom, and with wisdom comes the unfortunate realization that, well, teachers don't exactly know everything. Here's a look at some of the most well-known historical events that never even happened, even though your history teacher said they did. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the made-up ride of Paul Revere. The legendary image of Paul Revere blasting through the Massachusetts countryside and warning American colonials that the British were coming has its origins in an 1860 poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, who greatly rearranged and simplified much of the real historical narrative of the night of April 18, 1775. For one thing, Paul Revere didn't receive the famous one-if-by-land, two-if-by-sea lantern signals, he sent them. He also wasn't a solo writer. He was just one part of a larger warning system, including Dr. Samuel Prescott, who actually warned the militia at Lexington and Concord after Revere was arrested outside Lexington. Oh, and he didn't shout, the British are coming, either. The one quote we do have from him was his reply to someone telling him he was making too much noise. Noise? You'll have noise enough before long. The regulars are coming out. Revere was important and a hero, but his deeds have been much exaggerated. So, why did Longfellow turn Paul Revere into his solo hero? Probably because, listen my children and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Samuel Prescott doesn't rhyme. There are three things every red-blooded American knows about George Washington. He was the first president of the United States. His face is on Mount Rushmore, and he had a gnarly set of wooden teeth. If you're a big shot who likes to impress people at parties with your boundless knowledge of American history, you probably also know the story of the cherry tree. It goes as follows. When Washington was a kid, he was given a hatchet as a gift by his father and promptly used it to chop away at a cherry tree. When Washington's dad confronted him about the tree, the little future president replied, I cannot tell a lie. I did cut it with my hatchet. What a little rebel. Oh yeah, he said, he said, I cannot tell a lie. I did it with my little hatchet. The boy loves to tell the truth all he, the time. He does, sir. However, as the Digital Encyclopedia of George Washington points out, that didn't happen. The story was introduced in the fifth edition of a biography of Washington from 1806 by an author named Mason Locke Weems, who wanted to tie Washington's political success to a life of virtue. The book was a bestseller, now the story is everywhere. We all know the story of Ben Franklin and his kite. You know I invented electricity. I know. Well, I'm sensing a little electricity right here. Whoa, 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 not so fast, Ben. The story goes that Benjamin Franklin discovered electricity by flying a kite with a key tied to it in a storm. According to Tail, Franklin was shocked, quite literally, when he touched the key after his kite was struck by lightning. But as Mental Floss explains, the story definitely didn't happen that way, if it even happened at all. First of all, Franklin didn't discover electricity, he merely experimented with it. Most likely, the whole kite business was just an experiment Franklin devised to determine whether lightning was indeed electricity, an idea he proposed in a letter to a friend. When the letter was later published in France, French scientist Thomas Francois de la Barre performed an experiment with a lightning rod proving Franklin's hypothesis correct. Whether or not Franklin subsequently flew a kite in a lightning storm is a matter of some debate among historians. What's not up for debate, however, is the bit about him touching a charged key and getting a shock. Even a much less powerful charge than an actual lightning strike would have fried old Ben to a crisp. The story is pretty well known. Lady Godiva, the wife of Leofrich, the Lord of Coventry, England, felt sympathy for the exorbitant tax burden placed on the peasantry of the medieval town. Leofrich tells his pleading wife that he will lower taxes when she rides naked through the town, which she does. In a side element to that tale, as a side of respect, all of the villagers stay indoors while she rides. However, one randy boy named Tom decides to take a look getting struck blind and inspiring the phrase Peeping Tom at the same time. As interesting as this story is, most of it is probably untrue. The story is based on a real person, a woman named Gudifu, which is the Anglo-Saxon name that the Latin Godiva comes from, and she was the wife of Leofrich, the real Count of Coventry. But as Harvard Magazine explains, historians of the time did not indicate there was anything notable about this woman, outside of being married to an important man. And you'd think that, oh yeah, there was that one time she and a horse streaked the town to lower taxes would have at least garnered a mention. 
It wasn't until two centuries later that monks started recording this legend, likely as a way of explaining certain historical acts of generosity on the part of Leofrench. Pretty much every kid in America learns on their first day of history class that America was discovered by the Italian explorer Christopher Columbus, who sailed the ocean blue in 1492 in an attempt to reach Asia and subsequently proved that the world was round. I thought he directed home alone. However, as the Washington Post notes, almost none of what we learned about Christopher Columbus's kids is true. For one thing, the ancient Greeks had already figured out that the world was round. Columbus simply thought it had to be smaller due to some bad math. He definitely didn't discover America either. Aside from the fact that there were millions of people already living there, Columbus wasn't even the first European to land in the Western Hemisphere. Leif Erikson is believed to have landed and made a settlement in North America 500 years prior. Last but not least, Columbus never set foot on continental North American soil, but only various islands in the Caribbean. If you feel like you've been lied to all your life, well, you kind of have. An enormous fire hit the city of Rome during the early days of its empire in 64 CE. The fire burned for six days and consumed 70% of the city, leaving about half the people without homes. Popular legend states that the Emperor Nero spent the time during the fire playing music and singing about Rome's destruction. Nero thought himself to be a visionary artist, so visionary, in fact, that his last words were allegedly what an artist dies in me. Dramatic much? The story gave rise to the popular expression, Nero fiddled while Rome burned, which has gone on to describe anyone who acts ineffectually during a time of crisis. However, this saying is rooted in lies. As historians have noted, the fiddle did not exist until about a thousand years from the time of the fire. If Nero was playing anything at all, it would have been a sitara, an instrument similar to the lyre, whose name is the source of the guitar we know today. But wait, there is actually not any evidence that Nero was sitaraing while Rome burned either. The closest report comes from the Roman historian Tacitus, who says there were claims that Nero sang about the destruction of Troy during the fire. But even Tacitus found this story to be contrived. The cold hard truth is that Nero was still kind of a jerk about the fire even if he didn't fiddle during it. He blamed the whole thing on the still obscure religious cult called Christians and then built a big house for himself on the ruins. Like we said, dramatic. Why did the angry peasant class of the French Revolution cut off the head of their queen, Marie Antoinette? According to popular knowledge, it was because she said they should eat cake. Apparently, these folks didn't have a sweet tooth. The story goes that someone told the queen that the people of France had no bread, to which she responded, Let them eat cake. The statement is pretty much exactly the kind of thing an out-of-touch, oblivious person would say. It's just that she never actually said, let them eat cake. However, as you've probably guessed by now, there's no historical evidence that Marie Antoinette ever said any such thing. Um, well that depends on who you ask. Mm, well, I asked Kirsten Dunst, who played her in the movie. <laughs> Encyclopedia Britannica explains that variations of that story, used to poke fun at rich people, had existed around the world in other languages for centuries before Marie Antoinette was even born. The first French language current appeared in print in a book by French philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who attributes the quote to an anonymous princess. Marie Antoinette was a princess at the time, but too young for anyone to care about her culinary opinions. Rousseau-inspired revolutionaries likely applied her name to the story as a form of propaganda. The story goes that on All Hallows Eve in 1517, an obscure monk named Martin Luther from the small German town of Wittenberg strolled up to the castle church and hammered to the door a list of his soon-to-be-famous 95 theses, which laid out grievances with the Catholic Church, primarily centered on the sale of indulgences, or in other words, church exchanging forgiveness of sin for money. Martin Luther's bold and risky act subsequently kicked off the Protestant Reformation and would go on to change the world. So, what's the real story? Did this brassy monk stroll up to the church door, hammer in hand, and ring out revolution across the land? According to Martin Luther researchers, nah. For starters, the story was first written by someone who could not possibly have witnessed it, and it was first published after Luther died who, by the way, had gone his whole life without mentioning the story to anyone. Additionally, Luther considered himself to be a good and loyal Catholic up until his dying breath, 
so it's extremely doubtful that he would have ever done anything to so dramatically provoke his superiors in the church hierarchy. Of course, Martin Luther did actually deliver his 95 theses to church leaders asking them to cease the sale of indulgences, but he was much more subtle about it, likely delivering a politely worded letter with the theses attached. But you've got to admit that the image of a man nailing his complaints to the door of a church is so striking that it puts the true, less exciting story to shame. It's easy to say, well, of course people believe these fake stories in Falcon times. They didn't even have Snopes to fact check. But not all fake historical events happened or didn't happen in the distant past. There are major, world-shaking events reported in living memory that completely, actually, weirdly didn't happen. One such occurrence was the Gulf of Tonkin incident, a confrontation between ships in the Gulf of Tonkin near North Vietnam that led to the U.S. becoming more directly involved in the Vietnam War. According to reports, an American destroyer was pursued and attacked by North Vietnamese torpedo boats in 1964 on two separate occasions. The result of these reports was the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which authorized President Johnson to more or less go buck wild on Vietnam which, as you likely know, turned into a national disaster. Well, it turns out, we were all punked. As reported by the U.S. Naval Institute, declassified documents have revealed that the U.S. ship fired the first warning shots in the initial encounter, but failed to report said shots, which made the Vietnamese appear to be the aggressors. And the second incident? Yeah, it never even happened at all. Instead, U.S. ships motored around in a storm shooting torpedoes at tall waves, which could look like ships on a radar for hours. It was initially reported as an attack to the higher-ups, but when they realized the mistake, they decided to go with it anyway. Great job, guys! Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about history are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.